Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me in this video today. My name's Ash. You can call me Ash or Brahma18, whatever you prefer. In this video today, we're continuing our FIFA 22 custom tactics series where I show you how to recreate real systems in game. It's never a promise that you'll win every game, but it is a promise that they'll be recreated as effectively and as accurately as we can possibly get it with the FIFA 22 gameplay. Now, I put out a vote on my Patreon recently um, asking all of my wonderful patrons which tactic they wanted to see cover next on the channel. Two tactics won the vote in the end. One was Jose Mourinho's Chelsea team in his first stint, of which we covered in the last video, so do go and check that out. And the other one was Arsene Wenger's Invincible team, that incredible team that went the whole season unbeaten in the Premier League in 2003 to 2004. So then, we've already covered Mourinho's Chelsea, so we are going to come on to Wenger's Invincibles today. Really excited to get into this one. A couple of quick notices. I've already mentioned my Patreon. Do go and check that out if you haven't done so already. Consider supporting me. You have access to a whole range of perks, not only the votes, but also exclusive tactics videos that I don't cover on the channel. We've already done Mar uh, Thiago Motta's Spezia and also Marco Silva's Fulham. Lots more to come on that. You get access to my FIFA 22 custom tactics package where I give you breakdowns and deep dives, rankings and ratings on every tactic that we cover on the channel. Whole range of other um, perks as well, such as my player scouting board, so do go and check that out. Another notice, if you, well you probably will notice, on the gameplay above me, I am playing with my custom sliders, so do bear that in mind. This tactic was also created and tested using those custom sliders, so please do bear that in mind. Do go and check them out as well if you want to enhance your gameplay a little bit. Um, I'll leave a link to the video somewhere within the playlist. And with that being said, it is time to get into the tactic. So I'm going to show you the formation and the position change as well that you will see. And also then we'll go through the tactics and I'll explain why they do it and how they do it as well. And finally, we'll round off with the player instructions. So first things first, with the formation, we have the 4-4-2. But we do have a couple of changes, as you can see here. First things first, with the fullbacks, you're going to want to change these to wing backs. This is something that we do often in these videos. And the reason why we do that is because then, one, you're going to get them further wider. They're going to be almost on the touchline, hopefully, regardless of the width that you're playing, um, particularly when you're on the ball as well. And also because then it's hopefully going to get them more further forward. Um, now, you need it less so for the right back, which would have been Laurent in this case, but for the left back, um, where you've got Ashley Cole, you've naturally got that that attacking-minded, um, mm. you know, kind of extra winger in Ashley Cole. Um, so please do bear that one in mind as well. You know, like I say, you're just going to get these guys further forward. Also, with the central midfielders, now I went for the 4-4-2 holding. You can do the flat. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you do change one of these to defensive midfielder. They're going to create more of that Gilberto Silva role as opposed to Patrick Vieira, who's the central midfielder, because he's more of a box-to-box -box guy. You know, Gilberto Silva's more of that, that flat central midfielder who's going to look to try and screen and protect the back four as much as he can. What you notice with defensive midfielders in this game is that compared to central midfielders, you're going to find them more willing to help out in the box in the defensive third and defensive phase. So that's why we like to have that element of extra protection by moving him to defensive midfield as opposed to just a central midfielder. Also worth bearing in mind, you know, I try to match the positions to the players that Arsenal currently have as much as I could. It was very hard. They're not the best team to replicate this, to be honest, personnel-wise. As you can see, we've got the likes of Odegaard and Martinelli up front. Thomas Partey could have done either central midfield role, really. Would have preferred someone a bit more attacking compared to Tommy Yasu. I think he's more of a centre-back, personally. Um, but, you know, I did try my best. So, do just bear that in mind as well. Because I, I often get people commenting saying, why have you got this guy there? Blah, blah, blah. On to the tactics then. First things first. What have we got went out of possession? So, defensive stall is pressure on heavy touch. Not a counter-pressing team. Not an extreme pressing team where they're relentlessly going after the opposition to win the ball back. Instead, and what you tend to find with a lot of teams back in that era 20 years ago, plus is even the successful teams you know they're not predicated on a relentless press um, and so as a result you have more of a mid block which will come on to very very shortly and they'll just press in certain moments often it would be the likes of one of the attackers a Burkamp, a Thierry Henry instigating a press and then the rest of the block of the team will go with them 
and that's what you're looking for. Again, you can also complement this by instigating a team press, which is left and then down on the D-pad that will hopefully get some players pressing a bit more if you feel like there's an opportunity for you to really seize control of the ball from the opposition. The width is down to 10. It's going to be very compact, very narrow. It's even more so important in this formation where you've got a 4-4-2. There might be more gaps forming in between each um, vertical line. And so as a result, you're looking to try and narrow and cut them out as much as possible. And so with 10... Um, you know, it does a really good job of doing that. The team becomes very, very compact, quite hard to play against. Yes, you sacrifice some space out on the wings, but as you'll see in the gameplay, if you're looking every so often, and I'll show the gameplay after I've explained the tactics as well, um, you know, when we force them out wide, they, they don't hurt us a lot from those positions. They're always looking to come back inside. Um, so again, just something that you, you'll want to try and employ as much as possible. The depth is 60, and that's going to give you a more a slightly more aggressive mid block but it is still a mid block and that's very much how they um you know sort of Im implemented that style now as time went on um and you know Arsene Wenger of course his, his reign at Arsenal advanced you know 2010 onwards they became more aggressive um you know they played with much higher lines but in this instance you know they it wasn't wasn't so much the case Instead, what you found with the mid block in particular is that they could do a bit of both. It added a bit more balance to their game, added a bit more variation. And as a result, um, it meant that teams were less likely to be able to play over the top of them, but they could still have an element of, you know, can we push at the pitch? Can we try and take the ball from the opposition? Um, and, you know, mid blocks are really the best thing to complement a pressure on heavy touch um, or press after possession loss. Um, defensive style um, so that's something worth noting as well offensively then what do we have well we have slow build up in the build up play and we have possession in chance creation now this one's fairly obvious we know how Wenger always likes to play and we know how Arsenal likes to play as well trying to play through the thirds build out from the back they had the players to do that a little bit harder to do it in a 4-4-2 system but it is still possible particularly de depending on the player instructions and the roles that you have within that unit um, but again, a little bit harder. Like I say, though, again, looking to play through the thirds. Not a lot of penetration in behind. Instead, they'd look to work the ball up the pitch. It was mainly the likes of Henri, maybe Ljungberg as well, who would look to utilise that movement in behind. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of people coming, dropping off, coming short and showing for the ball in order to keep progressing it through the thirds. So the width is down to 20. And this is something we sort of alluded to at the start of the video. With it being a 4-4-2, you're going to need it very, very compact, particularly when it's a possession-based system. Now, obviously, if you're a counter-attacking, you probably want to attack wider. Um, but when, in this case, in Arsenal, obviously, you've got lots of players, as I say, coming short, showing for the ball. As a result, we've only two in midfield. We've only two at the at the back in the central areas. You know, you're going to need these players condensing. And that's what we do with the width. Obviously, I spoke about the wingbacks earlier. When you've got a narrow width, these guys will still come out um, and come wider. And that's what you're looking for. Again, they're going to hopefully create the width. Now, the wingers will do a bit of that as well. And I'll come on to the instructions a bit later on and talk to you about this more. But the wingbacks are there to create that width. Players in the box is up to seven. It's going to give you roughly three to four players in the box. You're looking for the two strikers, maybe, and a winger, and maybe the central midfielder as well. Often, someone like Burkamp would have dropped off, and then Patrick Vieira would then be looking to surge into the box and make up the numbers that way. But roughly, you're looking for between three and four players. The corners and free kicks, both of these are up to four. Gives you a good selection of players. Didn't notice something that they did in particular um, that would have changed this, to be honest. Even with free kicks, they often like to get the big men up front um, in those set-piece situations. You know, the centre-backs, etc. Um, central midfielders as well. So, yeah, nothing much you really need to change here. We've got both of these on four and four. Right then, let's move on to the player instruction, starting off with the goalkeeper. We have him on comes for crosses, something we often do in these videos. Helps you enormously in those crossing situations to defend the crosses. Um, and it's just something that's a little bit overpowered on this game. You want your keeper to try and play on the front foot as much as possible um, within those situations. However, we're saving outside the box. This is unbalanced. Didn't notice the keeper coming out that much. Obviously, it was much more irregular back in those days 20 years ago and plus not many keepers used to come that far out of their box often um, preferring to remain in their 18 yard box so that's something worth noticing as well again with a mid block shouldn't be as as required as needed 
The two centre backs are absolutely fine. You don't need to change any of their instructions. And then coming on to the full backs, we have a couple of different roles. So with the right back, which would have been Laurent, we've got him on overlap. But this time his attacking runs are balanced. And the reason why they're on balanced is because... You're not looking for him to get forward all the time. That's something that he didn't do. Often, again, because it's a 4-4-2, you need that extra layer of protection. So sometimes he would invert, sometimes he'd bed in and help with the centre-backs and form a back three. And that's really what we're looking to, looking to do in this case. Now, obviously, occasionally he'd go forward. And again, it depends on really the situation. Um, so again, you've got that nice bit of variation there. However, on the other side, with Ashley Cole in this case, or Kieran Tierney, you got him on overlap again, but this time join the attack again, playing the role of that forward thinking, just attacking left back out and out. Um, you know, he's Ron really looking to get forward and support the attacking moves. On to the midfield then, first off with the defensive midfielder. We've got him on cut passing lanes. That's something that's very important because that's uh, that zonal sort of lane element is something that's very, very key to an Arsene Wenger system. Not really going man-to-man, -man, instead preferring um, that sort of more modern, slightly more risky approach, I guess, um, but definitely something that, that worked out for them. Attack and support, he's stay about while attacking. As I spoke about earlier, he's the one screening and anchoring um, the back four. Also looking to play the role of a possessional pivot as well in the middle and attacking thirds. But generally, again, looking to protect the back four and not looking to be too progressive and, and running out of his position too much. Same with positioning freedom. As a result, stick to position. But defensive position is cover centre. Again, because of the fact that you've only got two central midfielders, you're going to want to make sure that he isn't getting dragged out wide. The wide areas should be for the fullbacks and the wingers to be manning. So he shouldn't be having to get dragged out wide. However, with the central midfielder, obviously very different instructions. First things first, attack and support is balanced. And the reason why you want that is because when you have him get forward, he'll be making penetrating runs beyond the strikers. That's not what you want. You want him as more of a box-to-box -box midfielder, looking to support all phases and elements um, of the game and of your team. So as a result, we've got him on balanced. With support on crosses, he's on get into the box for the cross as well. Again, looking to perform that role of the uh, box to box mid and then this is interceptions is on aggressive and that's really where you're looking to get the best out of him we know what patrick vieira is like someone who liked to go in for the challenge very very strong very very confident so as a result to try and replicate that we've changed it to aggressive interceptions in the hope that he'll really try and you know impose himself on the opposition within those central areas his defensive position is also on cover centre, which is something we've already spoken about. And then positioning freedom is free roam as well. And what you do here is you're getting him into the areas just on the ball as much as possible. Again, massive part of the way Arsenal would build up. And as a result, on free roam, you can get him into more areas. You get him drifting wide and drifting around more, picking up lots of space, hopefully. And so as a result, with free roam, this does the best job of replicating that. The two wingers then on different instructions. We'll start off with the left midfielder, which would have been someone like Robert Perez. He's on comeback on defence to make sure that he is tracking back. But then his chance creation is on free roam, and that means that he's going to be coming inside, he's going to be coming short, going to be going all over the place. And this is very important as well, because again, someone like Perez obviously doesn't have the pace to try and penetrate the opposition relentlessly and running behind um, behind the defence. So as a result, he's really looking for more intelligent pieces of movement. And that's really where we got the best out of him in the gameplay, if you've noticed. His support runs, coupling in with that and complementing that, is come short. Again, showing for the ball. We spoke about earlier how with the 4-4-2, you're going to want players becoming more compact, trying to play through the thirds. And this really plays into that. So again, he's going to be looking to come and show for the ball and support the central midfielders as much as possible. Finally, support on crosses is balanced in the hope that maybe um, you'll obviously get a little bit of balance in between him going into the box, then the right midfielder, then the central midfielder as well, and the strikers. That's why we have it on balance, just because we don't want them all running into the box at once. On the right-hand side, obviously some different instructions. We've still got him on comeback on defence. This time we've got him on getting to the box of crosses as well because we want him to be more likely to do that. But then chance creation is cut inside. And the reason why we have him on cut inside is because he's going to be angling his runs with support runs which are on getting behind. As a result, this is going to get him more likely into goal-scoring positions. 
Um, and it's also going to help because... As we're going to speak about very shortly, with Odegaard or the Burkamp role, you're going to have someone dropping off. So he's going to have to utilise that space as much as possible um, to make sure that it's worthwhile. So as a result, he's going to be able to exploit the space that Burkamp does leave. So then, on to the two strikers. Let's talk about that role. Let's talk about that Burkamp role. We've got Odegaard in this case. We've got him on stay central for support runs. And this is partly because, obviously, you want more numbers in the central areas of the pitch with only uh, two central midfielders. So, as a result, you know, rather than him drifting out wide, you've got numbers out there. You don't need another guy coming out wide in this situation. As a result, he'll come into the more advanced pockets of space in the central areas and then help you to build it through the thirds that way. His attacking runs is false nine as well. Again, looking to get him to drop off, looking to get him into the game as much as possible and get the ball to him. And then obviously we'll have the right midfielder exploiting the space that he leaves as a false nine by making those runs and, and angling those runs as well. And finally, defensive support is come back on defence. You're only going to want one guy staying forward. And in this case, we have made it the Henri roll. And on to that on roll, we've got Gabriel Martinelli in this case. His support runs is actually drift wide. And the reason why is that obviously we know where Omri was at his best, coming out onto the left-hand side, coming in from the left-hand side, obviously exploiting that left-hand side a lot. Um, but also with the left midfielder, which is the Pires role, Naturally, you've got him coming short, you've got him free roaming, he's going to be coming inside a lot more. You need someone to exploit that space along and help support Ashley Cole, the left back. And so as a result, with him on Drift Wide, he's going to come and do that as well. On top of that, he's also going to look to exploit them with his runs by drifting wide. And that is why we have him on getting behind as he looks to utilise his pace and his movement to add another layer of penetration against the opposition. He's finally, his defensive support is stay forward. And what that's going to do for you is going to make sure that you do have an out ball when obviously you regain possession um, in the lower third of the pitch and you can get it up to him even when you need to and then you can play off in that way. So you do have at least one player staying forward. Okay, with that being said, we're going to round a video off there. If you've got any questions about the tactic at all, make sure to let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer any questions or concerns that you may have. If you want to see where this tactic ranks amongst all of the other tactics that I've covered, you know what to do. Check out my Patreon and check out the Chairman tier where you can get access to the FIFA 22 Custom Tactics Package as well as exclusive tactics videos, votes, behind-the-scenes videos, my Player Scouting Package with real scout reports and real players, which is coming soon, and a whole host of other rewards as well. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to check out the links in the description, such as my Twitter. Give me a follow on there. And also my affiliate links. You can go on them. You buy anything, just give the channel a little kickback. It's all stuff like my equipment, um, all of my gaming gear, all that good stuff. A great way to support the channel. On that note, we're going to finish the video off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.
referee at Manchester United. Coming off the pitch, number 10, Marcus Rashford. Coming onto the pitch, number 21, Edinson Cavani.
Manchester United goal, number 11, Mason Greenwood.